Hi, I'm Chris from Mirror Windows, and hey, you can do this. But wait, not just that. That's something I'm going to be bringing you going forwards. It's another project. Uh, move the microphone a little bit. What I mean is you can do this. Listen to the sort of chopping guitar. Try this. Because this is Air Windows mid-amp. As you can see, we've got it here. I've got a gain control. I've got a tone control. We can get kind of beepy with it as well. So the idea of this is Air Windows mid-amp is like, I don't know, a sort of Fender Twin or something. It is not a high gain amp, but it's there to have some body depth solidity, but also a real spiky, aggressive quality to the highs. It's not like little amp, which is meant to be like a little tiny amplifier. This one's meant to have some size to it, but it's still basically clean. Here's something that we can do as long as we're fooling around with um, these new samples. There's, I'll tell you a little bit more about this going forwards. You might also notice that my drums sound a little different now. But what I can do here is I'm going to option drag it over here if it lets me. There we go. And now I have the same thing on the bass. back that guitar off a little bit. Now we have it on a bass guitar. And of course it's not really like a bass amp, but I do have the dry wet on there, so... That's what our DI bass is. It's called bass throb because it's a pulsing bass rhythm at this tempo. And we can add the cabinet style to it. Dial it back a little bit, more output. And that's a nice beefy tone for a uh, bass guitar. Speaking of tone, since mid-amp lets you roll off lots and lots of highs, we can use it on the bass like this to sort of reinforce lows and combine it with dry for a real amp-like tone on that bass guitar, which is a DI guitar. And then since we don't necessarily have to have it turned up this much, We can dial the gain back a little bit. And with doing that, what we're doing is we're kind of messing with the amp to give it more attack. Compared to what the DI sound is like. 
Now if you are using a bass and you haven't recorded an amp with it, this is a way that you can get some of the sound including really deep sounds because it turns out it's able to do that fairly well as well. We've got a very amp-like sound here and we can bring in the drums. And now we've got a much heavier bass line than we had with the dry. Mind you, the dry still has something going for it. It's got a... Uh, I'm playing that entirely with my thumb. And if that's impressive, you should hear what it's like when I am playing that on um, 150 beats per minute. But that's a whole other story. Point being, we can use mid-amp on just straight up a direct bass track to give it more of a amp-like quality. Like this. That blends it with the uh, somewhat more impactful drums than usual. And... We can also take this guitar, which is also a uh, DI-like guitar that's actually going through a modified analog man juicer compressor. I recorded it that way because this was the effect I was trying to get. But when you run that into a amp sim, or reamp it if you wanted, I get that kind of impact and clarity that I was looking for out of it. And we've got just enough distortion on it. Or we can make it darker if we want, but... If we're looking for that Telecaster kind of sound, because it is a Telecaster style guitar. We can have it kind of sit and jump out nicely. So here we are, mid-amp on a bass and also on a Telecaster style guitar. Now, if we wanted to add other stuff, that would be a different plugin that you already have, because that is another guitar into Grind Amp. And that's what that one sounds like all by itself, because that is a DI guitar part that's running through, oh God, what is it? It's, it's running through this particular uh, stomp box that I've got that happened to do a good job of combining with grind amp. So I have a whole bunch of guitar sounds that I've recorded at a bunch of different temples for that, for the purpose. of making recordings and sample libraries like that. That, however, is another story. And the story for today is mid-amp. And mid-amp is a plugin that I'm demonstrating with all of these different samples that you will be seeing later. For today, Midamp is available for you to download now.
and you can throw it on your own guitar tracks or whatever it is that you want. It does a pretty good re here, let's get completely crazy just for a second. When I was recording this new uh, drum thing, I was getting this going because this is using a analog compressor and it's captured that way. I wanted to make my drum sound better for the stuff that I do. But we can also distort it. And throw a mid-amp on the drums, too. That's a weird thing to do, but hey, we'll, we'll throw a mid-amp on literally everything. That's pretty hard. And you shouldn't really put your drums through a guitar amp, so We'll take that back off again. And that is granted a lot of other things besides, but that is mid-amp. I hope you like mid-amp. It turns out to have a bunch of interesting uses, and it's a good way of getting slightly dirtier tones out of your completely in-the-box recordings. I mean, this is such a simple mix, I'm not running uh, console 8 with this. This is just made out of Purist console. But um, with a bit of luck, uh, you can add mid amp to fire amp and little amp and uh, God, what else? Grind amp. Grind amp, which is what I was demonstrating with the heavy chugs. And I don't have the sample libraries of those particular gar guitars out yet. Although what I do have, when I do have the sample libraries of those out, you should be able, once I finish this work, once I finish this product, of uh, being able to take a uh, live band style thing at any tempo you like. For instance, let's try 113 beats per minute. And bounce around the power chords and things so that you can do uh, the stuff that I've been doing with the, the track Skronk is a sort of test bed for this kind of stuff. Ideally, once I get this sorted out, you should be able to put together whatever kind of heavy music you want. And let's see, I'll flip this around a little bit so that uh, we have stereo guitars on everything and then go to about 140 beats per minute and you'll be able to put together something as a basic track kind of like this. Anyway, that's the idea. And I'm demonstrating that entirely with Air Windows Amp Simulator plugins, but if this workflow works for you, you could always like reamp it with real amps or something. I'm going to be most likely using the Amp Simulator plugins because I am going to Canada again very soon. And I have a whole pile of plugin work to do while I'm there. 
So one of the things that I've done is track these new uh, examples so that I can put together music while I'm on the road on a laptop alone. And, uh, you know, all of my stuff, like, I'm, I'm using this right now for something that you'll hear about pretty soon, but I'm going. this is going in storage. My house will be empty, and I'm going to be in uh, British Columbia for a couple of months. While I'm there, I have a bunch of plugins to do, and I'm bringing along everything that I need so that I can continue working on that stuff while I'm there. I'm not going to get paid in Canada, but I should be able to at least be able to I'll at least be able to do new plugins, even if I don't actually get paid for doing them until I get back. And that's kind of exciting. So you will see a different view from me, as you might have remembered, this sort of like yellow wall background kind of thing and the really cool lamp. You will be seeing that again because I'm going back into that situation and will be carrying on my plugin and sample making activities while I'm there. That's pretty much enough for now. For today, I hope you like Midamp. I think it is going to be useful to some people. And again, I'm not demonstrating it with uh, Console 8. I'm demonstrating it with Purist Console 2. But um, you can put this stuff together with the most recent version of Console and have a pretty darn respectable kind of big late 70s sound. The thing that I'm doing with the drums in this recent sampling session is more about getting a more adaptable kind of sound because as cool as it is to convincingly do the early 70s thing and have that actually happening, you can continue to go beyond that and cover wider bases by taking advantage of things like compression. And, but that's for another day. For today, I hope you like Midamp. It is supported by my Patreon. My Patreon is what keeps me doing these things. Even if I'm not getting paid in Canada, it is what is letting me like find a family to have while also having my career and my business and this that I do. Uh, there will be more about that later. But for now, I hope you like Midamp, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.